Meet the best way to protect your home while you're away. I've been working on a sentry bot to keep away intruders. In the previous video, I set up a camera system to detect cars and people. So now it's time to work on intercepting them. Along with making him automatically shoot, I'm also going to upgrade his motor and some of his other features. Shipbot moves rather sluggishly right now. His motor has a gearbox that has lots of torque. It outputs so much torque that he can easily pull me around. This is great if I needed him to haul something, but a robot that you can jog away from isn't super intimidating. Luckily enough, this is a common motor type and there's a version without the gearbox. If the online calculators are right, this new motor will bring the max speed from about 5 miles per hour to just over 27 miles per hour or 43 kilometers an hour. Good luck outrunning that. Since the motor mount was designed with the gearbox offset in mind, I had to create an adapter so I could mount the new motor. I also had to swap the rear sprocket since the new motor uses a different type of chain, but that gave me a good opportunity to remove the unused brake rotor and swap the old bearings out. The new motor is quite zippy. I didn't really consider how small my front yard is before the upgrade, because now this thing is ridiculously fast and it runs out of driveway very quickly. My road doesn't get much traffic, so I started speed testing there instead. This was a little sketchy because the steering became touchier as the bot got faster, but thankfully all of my neighbor's mailboxes remained completely unharmed. Except for the ones on my side of the street because some dirty thief looted all of those mailboxes a few days ago. Anyway, look how much slower this guy used to be. He was practically crawling. Now he's a speed demon. A super chill sales guy happened to be making his rounds while I was doing the testing. I think this new audience made Shipbot a little nervous, because during that next test he almost flipped over. After some practice, I was able to keep him more controlled and I managed to get him up to 15.7 miles per hour or 25 kilometers an hour, which is more than enough speed for now. Eventually, I'll look into tuning the steering so it's more stable at high speeds. I also noticed the suspension is terrible at speed on anything but a flat roadway. The rear spring works fine, but this front suspension is stiff. I had it looser, but it caused the front wheels to tilt, which is also not great. If you have any tips on how to fix that, please let me know in the comments. Speaking of the comments, I saw a few comments on the last video saying all of this was illegal. Even if it was illegal, I basically have a robot bodyguard. What are the cops gonna do? Arrest me? Hands up, get on the ground. Shipbot, get him. Shipbot, please. Shipbot needs a brain if he's gonna go after evildoers on his own. His brain is going to be a Raspberry Pi 4 that will control the servos and the autopilot. I bought a sturdy case to house the Pi and the other components. And I also found these neat little parts from GoBuilda that let you send a servo signal over Ethernet. This saves me from having a bunch of servo wires coming out of the housing and makes for a little less wire clutter. But it's still kind of a mess right now. I mentioned some of the other modes the paintball gun has in my first video, but I never ended up testing its full capabilities. The paintball gun was a Facebook Marketplace special, and it didn't have any identifying marks on it, so I had to ask around to get some more info. Apparently it shoots up to 20 balls per second. I don't know much about paintball, but a guy named Jared was kind enough to reach out and give me some helpful tips. He also generously gave me a force feed hopper which will help the gun shoot faster. Huge thanks to him, he's a super cool dude. The marker has two full auto modes. One is labeled auto and looks like it'll shoot about 10 balls per second, while the turbo mode looks like it's going to shoot the full 20 balls per second. Auto mode was effective and the marker cycled fine. Turbo mode, on the other hand, turned the gun into a juicer and completely liquefied the balls. A bunch of you wanted to see me add a speaker to Shipbot, so I'm going to do just that. I couldn't find an affordable, hardwired, waterproof speaker, so I just decided to add this siren speaker. I paired it with an amplifier that connects to the Pi using an aux cable. Since I was about to give the bot a voice, I decided it was only fitting to give him a set of eyes, too. Now, let's see what he has to say. 
I've adjusted the mic level so headphone listeners aren't deafened, but the speaker was somewhere between a scream and an air horn in terms of volume. While I was working on the sounds for Shipbot, a friendly neighbor happened to be strolling by and was curious about what I was doing. Yeah. Oddly enough, the music is clearer on the recording than in real life. Since it's designed as a siren, the speaker basically deep fries the music and makes it sound awful. Horns sound great though. This is what it'll sound like when an intruder is detected and interception mode has been activated. It's time to work on the core of this project, automatically intercepting people. There were a bunch of people saying the ATV was useless and I should have just went with a turret. A turret is totally fine if you're in the boonies and don't have any neighbors, but I'm in the heart of suburbia. Having a turret by my front door means that if the paintball misses, it'll probably hit a neighbor's house. This is not good. A robot can reposition itself so that it is not going to put my neighbors at risk. It can also cover more area and protect the side gates as well as the front door. Before writing any code, I decided to do a waypoint test using the autopilot. I didn't want to debug code for hours, only to find out some setting was off and it wasn't an issue with my code. I'm really glad I did this because I found a major issue. The left half of my yard makes the autopilot go completely erratic. This was weird because in my first video I tested a waypoint mission and it worked fine. Since that video, the power company has trimmed the trees next to the wires. I'm not sure if that's enough to cause this level of interference, but the compass and other sensors were giving bad readings while near that area. Unfortunately, this isn't an issue I can immediately solve. My friend lent me a demo unit of a robo mower, and it also acted up on that side of the house, so GPS based positioning simply won't work there. When the mower first acted up, we figured it was just an issue with their software, but obviously that wasn't the case. Thankfully, I do know how to solve the problem, but it's going to have to be a part of a bigger upgrade that I'm working on. A lot of the safeties I planned for were based on that location information. Right now, Shipbot doesn't recognize anyone, and he will ruthlessly target any meat bag that he can see. That means for now, I can't test having him drive and then shoot, but I can still test the targeting and the firing. I set up the Pi to communicate with the autopilot. This lets me use the RC controller to activate and deactivate the turret. Before activation, the gun is in acute and non-threatening storage mode. When it's ready to fire, the bot raises his gun and starts looking for targets. I don't hate myself, so I decided to use normal paintballs instead of pepper balls for the full auto test. My buddy Dan was in charge of switching the control modes. All of the aiming and firing is completely automatic once the turret is active. While the turret is active, it'll shoot at its target every 10 seconds. This misfire was a timing issue. The code knows what angle the servo should be at, but it has no way of knowing when the servo actually reaches that angle. Fancier servos are capable of sending that information, but these aren't. Debugging at gunpoint was a lot trickier than I expected, but I managed to iron out most of the issues, and the turret finally aimed and fired at me. Send it. Firing. Bam. <laughs> it shot exactly around you. It missed, but that's okay. It's doing its best, and that's about all we can ask of anyone. On the next attempt, the bot was overthinking and overcorrected too far to the right. Bam. <laughs> I keep forgetting to turn it off. I haven't fully dug into it yet, but the horizontal servo is acting a bit funky. The aiming issue this time was not code related, which was a nice change. It's easy to see that part of this issue is that the turret mount is quite janky. The good news is, I've learned a lot since I first started this project. Lots of the problems I've faced this time around were old design decisions catching up with me. To fix some of those decisions, I'm going to move the autopilot and then remount the turret in the center so it's more stable. I'll also be swapping some of the electronics for more precise aiming. These changes go hand in hand with fixing the GPS issue. So while there were a bunch of setbacks in this video, I'm excited to use what I've learned to resolve these issues and make a more stable platform. If you have any ideas for Shipbot, let me know in the comments. It doesn't have to be related to home defense, I'm open to all sorts of ideas. I've been thinking about upgrading him to be more of a generalist by making the turrets swappable for other modules. 
I also have some other video ideas in the works, so if you liked what you saw, feel free to subscribe. That's all I have for now. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time.